Same storm is forecasted to form into the weekend. But do you know exactly how powerful storms form? Chris is here to raise your weather IQ to begin the season. June 1st officially begins the 183 day hurricane season that ends on November 30th and peaks September 10th. But for them to form, conditions have to line up and the better they do, the stronger they become. Let's raise your hurricane IQ. Let's bake a hurricane. Here are the basic ingredients you need. One, a pre-existing weather pattern. Two, surface water temperatures of 80 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. Three, a low wind shear environment. And four, the atmosphere has to be juiced up with a lot of moisture. Okay, let's bake a hurricane. Over warm waters, rising moisture condenses into cold air, forming multiple thunderstorms. This flow left undisturbed will eventually start to rotate into a low pressure system due to the spin of the earth. More air rushes in and more thunderstorms release heat and power into the storm. When the circulation becomes a closed lobe with a well-defined center, the storm officially is a tropical cyclone. When maximum surface winds are 38 miles per hour or less, it'll be numbered as a tropical depression. Winds of 39 to 73 miles per hour are tropical storm strength. At this point, a storm gets a name. Once winds within a storm reach 74 miles per hour, a hurricane is born. This is the ideal structure of a hurricane. Too much wind shear will disrupt the formation. The faster these warm core storms will spin, the more likely the eye wall will form. The strength of a hurricane is measured using the Saffir Simpson scale. Category three or greater is classified as a major hurricane, causing devastating to catastrophic damage. All tropical cyclones, regardless of wind speeds, can bring an extensive amount of rainfall and flooding, especially the slower they move. With WCNC Charlotte, I'm meteorologist Chris Mulcahy, and we're now all a little bit more weather-wise.